Open it and stick your head out and yell, I'm as mad as hell and I'm not going to take this anymore. This is the Tearing Down Idols podcast, where we strike at the root of America's problems. Hey there, hi there, ho there. Welcome to the 15th episode of the Tearing Down Idols podcast, where we strike at the root of America's problems. I'm Paul. Thanks for joining me this round. Uh, You know, some of you have been with me since I started this thing, and I hope it's been as fun for you as it's been for me. I've really appreciated the interactions, the back and forth I've had with some of you. It's been compelling, it's been encouraging. In a lot of cases, it's been very thought-provoking, and I'm just grateful that you're here. But even if you're just just checking this out for the first time, I'm glad you're here as well. It's it's great to have people along. Just as a heads up, I'm going to be really busy over the next couple of weeks. I've got a conference coming up, a few other things I have going on, so I may drop off the radar, so to speak, as far as the internet is concerned, which really isn't all that bad. Um, while I've said I do enjoy the interaction with folks, at the same time, it can get darn exhausting uh, when you run into folks who seem like they're just there because they're looking for a fight. They've got an axe to grind, and when you do the stuff I do, you're basically painting a target on yourself. And I'm used to that. It's kind of the story of my life to some extent. I was born on the wrong side of the theological tracks. But sometimes... I just need to walk away from it. I think it's healthier that way. Otherwise, you just start thinking everyone out there is just coming after you, and it gets you edgy after a while. And I realize it's not really about me at all, so I'm not making it about me. I just happen to be in a convenient position for the trolls and what have you. But, hey, you know, fair warning. If you come into my comment sections on my videos on my channel... That's my turf. I don't have to be nice. Just letting you know. Uh, Recently, I put up a video about so-called New Testament Christians, and it has blown up more than any other video I've ever posted. I have no idea why it's still getting views, but there it is. And I'm fine with that, obviously. But uh, I've had a couple of conversations in the comments and by email in relation to that video, which (laughs) they just have me shaking my head. I used an illustration in this video. It wasn't really a video. It's just uh, the audio track with the picture overlaid. But I used an illustration. And all I did was refer to Tolkien's The Lord of the Rings. I didn't go into the story. I didn't advocate it. I just used the title as an example because, well, I needed one. As simple as that. But apparently there were people who didn't like that because according to one person who admitted they'd never read it, it's a cult. It's an occult piece of literature. And interesting to note, all the people who came after me over it had never read it, which is actually pretty funny. It's... One person said something like, well, I know about the movies, so I know enough. Right, right, sure. Kind of like the person years ago who tried to debate the topic of Jesus with me, and it turned out everything he knew about Jesus he'd learned from the Da Vinci Code. Look, you're you're coming to a gunfight armed with a knife. But here's the thing about it. All right, They overlooked the rest of the video and homed in on that one illustration. An illustration which took all of maybe... I don't know, 30 seconds? I made the point and I moved on. But as far as these people were concerned, the fact that I made that reference at all was all that mattered to them. Anything else was moot. And you know, with people like that, there's really no winning. Okay, if I'd chosen a whodunit as an example, someone would probably have come after me for advocating books that focus on murder. If I'd used H.G. Wells... They probably would have come after me for advocating the literature of a socialist and evolutionist. The content of the book wasn't my point, though. I just chose a title 
to use for my illustration to make a point. But as far as that was concerned, that was all that mattered to them. I'd referenced the Lord of the Rings and oh, horrors of horrors. I, I, I can't listen to anything else you have to say, you heathen reprobate. You know, <laughs> Christian Israel has had a perennial problem with unity issues. We'll find any reason to squabble and divide over the most minute things, things that are secondary and in a lot of cases downright childish. Okay, I know of people myself who watch and read and listen to things that I don't necessarily approve of. Okay, but I also understand that we're all at different places in our respective walks. I know I have to pick my battles. And I also know that I'm not the end-all in doctrine and conduct. I realize I have my own flaws. And there may be things that I see as flaws in someone else that may not really be that big of a deal, especially in a time when we have much, much bigger fish to fry. It's like the example I always use of the Church of Christ denomination. They split over whether they should use one cup or two cups in their communion or whether there's a piano in their house of meeting. It's stupid stuff. But at the same time, most of them will welcome adulterers and thieves into their midst on a weekly basis. And Jesus talked about this in Matthew 23 when he was speaking to the Pharisees. He said, Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites! For you tithe mint and dill and cumin and have neglected the weightier provisions of the law, justice and mercy and faithfulness. But these are the things you should have done without neglecting the others. You blind guides who strain out a gnat and swallow a camel. By the way, these are the same guys who would make a federal case over the fact that I read this passage out of the New American Standard and not out of the 1611 King James Version Bible. I mean, that's, it's that kind of dumb stuff. I had one lunatic come after me for quoting Malachi 4 and neglecting to capitalize the S in sun. And that was a surefire evidence that I was a damn dirty Jew. This is the dumb stuff we like to get hung up on. And usually we get hung up on the minutiae when we get full of ourselves, which, by the way, are also minutiae. Uh, think of... David said, what is man that you are mindful of him? We're nothing. We're nobodies wanting to be somebodies. So we go and we make mountains out of molehills, and then we neglect the truly important things. Just like the Pharisees, they were making sure they were tithing down to the last iota and not a bit more or less, and they were ready to stone you for sneezing on the Sabbath. They were so meticulous about dealings with the filthy Samaritans that they washed a few dozen times a day just in case. They were so absorbed with the letter of the law that they utterly neglected the spirit of the law. And the spirit of the law is justice and mercy and faithfulness. When the apostles were faced with Judaizers, who were coming in and pushing things like circumcision as being essential to salvation in Acts 15, they broke it down to the simple stuff. They said, look, here are some of the basics where you can start. All right, abstain from food sacrificed to idols, stay away from fornication, and don't eat blood or anything strangled. That didn't cover absolutely everything, did it? But that wasn't the point. The fact is that as human beings... We're never going to follow God's commands perfectly, especially right out of the gate. we got to start from somewhere. we got to start small and build upward. And the apostles were showing grace as a part of their mission to emphasize to the Greek Christians that circumcision is nothing and uncircumcision is nothing, as Paul said. And that way they could hold these bean-counting Judaizers at bay. They were trusting in the grace of Christ. They weren't trusting in perfect adherence to the law. And that's what the Judaizers were doing. But so many of our people today have gotten so high on themselves that they're doing exactly what the Judaizers did in the Apostles' Day. They'll make a huge deal over what's on your bookshelf or whether you're observing the exact right Sabbath at the, at the exact right phase of the moon. I've seen them loan out money and when the money wasn't paid back when they thought it should be, they've run around telling people that the person they loaned to was a thief. Screw mercy and justice. I've got the lunar calendar all figured out, man. And I would say that at least 
At least 75% of our unity issues come from people straining at gnats. Folks, we have a common enemy. And our common enemy is afraid of us. They're afraid of what will happen if we come together with one spirit. And one spirit doesn't mean we have to be absolutely agreed on every single doctrinal point. It means we have the same goal, the same objective, the same ultimate desire. That being the kingdom of heaven growing and expanding and replacing the current Babylonian order. I mean, sure, there are things we can't budge on. All right, the gospel, the deity of Christ the authenticity and inerrancy of God's holy word, stuff like that. But those are only a very small handful of issues. Christians are never going to have hive mind. They're not going to be like the Borg in Star Trek. All right, we're, we're never going to think exactly alike. Unless, of course, we all become brainwashed cult members incapable of individual thought. But God wants us to think and reason. Otherwise, he wouldn't have given us brains. But because we're humans, we're going to think differently from one another. We're going to grow at different rates. We're going to see things differently. Our backgrounds, our experiences, our genetic makeup, our educations, all those things are going to be vastly different from each other. They're all going to make our brains work differently. And yes, I know, the Holy Spirit works in Christians to bring them to knowledge of truth. I get that. But not all Christians come to the same truths all at the same time. That's what growth is about. We're all going to reach spiritual maturity in various aspects at different rates and times than other people. God works in each of us in a variety of ways, and we need to be willing to show each other grace and mercy cognizant of this fact. Newsflash, you don't have perfect doctrine. Nobody does. Only God himself, and he shows us abundant mercy. If anyone has a right to cut us off for not being perfect, it's him. And him alone. But he doesn't. So who do we think we are for not associating with someone because he doesn't believe Eve jumped into bed with a snake? Or for not observing Passover? Or for not understanding the Godhead the same way we do? It's pure arrogance. It's plain old stupidity. Our enemy loves when we squabble among ourselves because that means we're busy at each other's throats and leaving them free to do whatever nefarious work they want to do unhindered, unchallenged. We might as well just sign up and join their ranks. Romans 14 talks about how there are going to be different ways people do things within the Christian body and how we need to be respectful of that. Am I going to encourage someone to higher and better growth by turning up my nose at them and dissing them for not seeing things the exact same way I do? Or will there be more constructive results if we show each other patience? And if we really can't get along, okay, fine, that's going to happen. But let's not declare ourselves enemies of each other. Paul and Barnabas just went different ways when they disagreed over something, but you don't once read of Paul knocking Barnabas. They parted ways to end the conflict, but they did continue working in tandem at the same time for the same goal, and we need to develop the ability to do that sort of thing if things get so bad we can't even get along. In our interactions with each other, we need to ask ourselves if we're doing harm to the body of Christ or building it up, and we need to be very, very careful. If we think someone is at fault, a constructive Patient conversation is going to do a lot more good than sniffing at them and saying, well, obviously nothing you have to say counts for anything. I'm out of here. Goodbye. Now, obviously, you're going to have the outright heretics, like those who deny key aspects of the salvation message, the gospel, or deny the deity of Christ, or who try to Judaize. But those people need to be reprimanded and given the boot. The Bible's clear on that. But when someone is truly trying, but just happens to be at a different place in their understanding, we need to be very careful. Because we risk hurting the body of Christ rather than edifying and building the body of Christ. And pharisaical behavior is is very easy to fall into. Right? Well, I'm not saying it isn't important, 
that we obey God's commandments as best we can. I'm also saying that we need to be much quicker to look at ourselves critically before we start criticizing others. We'd better make sure we're not blinded by beams in our own eyes while we're looking down our noses at people with moats in theirs. Pharisaical behavior is damaging to the cause of Christ. And we need to root it out because until we do, we're never going to get anywhere as a people and our enemies will have the run of the place. I associate with a lot of people I don't agree with 100%. Because if I only associated with people I agreed with 100%, I'd only associate with myself and only myself at the moment because past me and future me are going to think differently from how I think now. That's growth. Assuming you've been growing spiritually, do you despise the you from a week ago for thinking differently? Do you despise the you from a week in the future? No? Well, then follow the golden rule Christ laid out. As you would have others do to you, do also to them. That's love. That's what the whole of the law and the prophets hang on. That's the crux of the Christian walk and the kingdom of our God. And until we figure that out and start implementing it, we're just going to actively tear down the very kingdom we're supposed to be building and maintaining. And that's pretty much the thought I'm going to leave you with for the next couple of weeks, I think. But it's an important thought. I hope you'll ruminate on it a little because this Pharisaism thing is a cancer eating us away. We need to relax. We need to back off. Hey, I'll openly confess right here. I like The Lord of the Rings. I've been a fan of the book since I was a teenager. You might be opposed to that. Okay. You might believe there's a literal fallen angel named Satan. Well, I don't. Okay. But that doesn't mean we can't have meaningful conversations and work together for the kingdom of Christ. And with the world the way it is, I'm pretty sure we can at least agree that we need to focus on our common ground and work from there against the enemies of the cross. Amen? Okay. I'll sign off here. Don't forget to check out my website, tearingdownidols.com. Subscribe to this podcast on whatever platform you use. Subscribe to my YouTube. If you're on Odyssey or Gab, follow me there. Feel free to email me, tdi at mail.com. I'm interested in your thoughts. And God willing, we can all work together to make a positive impact in this world God has given us. I'll be preaching at a conference in Arkansas this coming week, and hopefully those messages will be up shortly afterwards, so be on the lookout for those. I'm really excited about the messages that are going to be delivered down there. I think it's going to be great. Pray for our people. Pray for the truth. Pray against Babylon. Pray, 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 pray. Set a schedule if you can. Maybe pray three times a day like Daniel did. But now more than ever, we need to be calling out to our God. He's the only one who can deliver us from this mess, right? Right. Of course I'm right. In this case, I'm right anyway. (laughs) Okay. Until next time, stay strong, keep the faith, and keep yourself under Christ and above the world. This has been the Tearing Down Idols podcast, where we strike at the root of America's problems. Subscribe and visit tearingdownidols.com for more information. You can email the podcast at tdi at mail.com.